Hey, welcome to Great Northern and Cascades Division in Enscale. I had somebody ask me about the train boxes that appeared in the background of one of the videos that I did a week or so ago. So I wanted to take a little bit of time to look at how you can make really quick and easy train boxes. Probably it's not going to be great if you're kind of bouncing them around between train shows in and out of cars or whatever. Um, but I think that these are pretty perfect for being able to store locomotives, rolling stock at home, keeps them protected, and then stops them getting too banged up. So I hope you enjoy this one. All right, so I have two different styles of boxes. They're the exact same, except one of them has a lid on top, and so opens up. Otherwise, inside, these two boxes are both the same, and the idea is that these can stack together. So on the side, there are these little clips, and I'll put a link in the description as to what they are. And the idea is that you can stack them on top of each other. So I can't do this while I'm also holding the camera. So let's see what it looks like when they're stacked on top of each other quick. All right, so this is them now locked in together. And so again, you only need the lid on the top one because then the second one down essentially is being covered by that first try. And then I also have another try. And so the idea, and I'm not gonna try and do it because it's too heavy, but you could pick this whole thing up, put it on top of that other try, same thing. It's got the little loop on the bottom that will clip into it. And so what I do is basically just stagger these from one side to the other, and so then they will all clip in together. All right, so let's talk a little bit about materials and construction. So the lid and actually the base, it's the exact same material. Um, this is one eighth inch thick or about three millimeter, depending on uh, what measurement system your country uses. And this is just basic birch plywood. It's craft birch plywood that you can get um, in most craft stores, at least in the U.S., places like uh, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, um, some box stores like Walmart carried as well, um, S Hardware. And it's 12 inches by 24 inches. So try and convert that again into whatever your system would be, 30 centimeters by 60 centimeters, something like that. And the idea was that I wanted to keep it simple so I don't have to cut these. Okay, so I have the exact same on the bottom, it upside down. It's just one of those sheets of birch plywood, 24 inches by 12 inches, and then one eighth inch thick. Okay, now the actual sides then, they are a little bit thicker. These are then quarter inch thick. And again, I then used, I think this was just a 24 inch length. This then is um, usually a little bit wider. It's like five and a half inches, something like that. So it's normally 24 inches long by about five and a half inches wide. And what you can do, even just with a craft knife, um, this is basically just um, some kind of basswood, or again, sometimes it's called craft plywood, um, aircraft wood, you know, there's different terms for this. But again, it's just a basic craft plywood or basswood. And then I cut that into strips. I did actually use uh, a saw that you would use for doing wood flooring, but you can actually just uh, cut this uh, with a craft knife, with a Stanley knife. It's thin enough at a quarter inches and the wood's soft enough that you can do it if you need to and you don't have any other tools. All right. I then cut this to, I think it's about one and a half inches, something like that. And so it means that you can get um, both the front and the back and then the two sides done. And you can also then start to get into doing another box from that one piece that was 24 inches long. And like I said, they're usually about five and a half inches wide. And then they're just glued together, like there's really nothing that special to it. It's just basic wood glue, like there's no nails if you wanted to. You probably could put in, you know, thin uh, 22, 24 gauge nails, something like that, just to kind of hold them together. But honestly, wood glue I find has worked. I built these two or three years ago, and they have moved all the way from Seattle out to Minneapolis, and they've been in and out of storage and bumped around, and they've stayed together. So basically just uh, wood glue to then put them together. And I think the way I did it was, I think I did the, the front and the back, clamped them in place, and then glued the sides on, clamped them in place, and that was pretty much it, left it to dry overnight, and then it was good to go. And so if you're doing one of the lower boxes, like this one that's got my North Coast Limited in, then that's really all there is to it. You don't have to worry about doing the lid. 
And if you want to do the lid, then again, it's just another sheet of that birch plywood. And then on the back, I think that these are just called jewelry hinges, jewelry box hinges. And so they lay flush. They've got very small screws. Um, you know, they're only about two or three millimeters. So they just about bite in. And you can somewhat see them just biting through the wood, but um, not really by much. Not enough that your fingers aren't going to be up here anyway. But then it means you don't have to try and chisel anything out. You don't have to try and lay any um, hinges inside or, or anything fancy like that. You certainly could do, but again, trying to look at cheap and easy ways of doing this. This is not fine <laughs> woodworking. This is not fine Italian craftsmanship or anything like that. It's just a cheap and easy way that you can make these boxes. All right, inside then, um, let's actually go and look at the one that I have for my Big Sky Blue Train and we'll actually see what's underneath this first. All right, so this is kind of a, a box that's in progress, um, also a train that's in progress. There's a couple that I still have to spray up. I've got brass sides on them um, from BrassCarSides.com and so this is completely custom painted. I think the only loco that's not actually complete detour from actually the box was this Kato loco um, but otherwise everything else is custom painted but anyway the box then has this thin felt material and again you can pick this up from most craft stores um, you know it's very thin felt it's just like one 1.5 millimeter something like that you can get it in sheets or you can get it in rolls this was just some stuff that my wife had hanging around and uh, she no longer has it hanging around she does know that I took it though and so just cut that into shape and like I said this one's in progress and I kind of left it so you can see and that's really all it is now when you glue it be a little bit careful with the glue that you use. I found this out from experience on, on gluing felt um, previously. If you use just like a regular white PVA glue, and if it's kind of a thick white glue, then what happens is this felt material basically soaks it up and it becomes kind of hard. And so you kind of negate the point of putting um, that kind of felt material down to give it a little bit of padding. Um, so very thin uh, white glue if you want to use it. Maybe even mix it in with a little bit of water. You could also do some kind of spray adhesive, a thin coat of spray adhesive. What you want is just something to hold it in place. It's not super important, but just don't make it too thick that it then starts to soak in and then becomes hard. If you wanted to, you could also use uh, some kind of foam as well. You could use thin two or three millimeter foam cut to shape if you want to have a little bit more protection. Only thing I would caution on there is just make sure the height clearance. Okay, there is probably plenty of room that you could do three millimeter foam uh, within there, but again, depending on how thick you cut these side pieces, what you don't want to do is have too thick of a foam in place that by the time you put the rolling stock in, it actually protrudes up above the height of the case itself um, because then you might have a problem, okay? All right, so once you've got that kind of felt glued in place and you've let that dry, how do you make it look kind of fancy like this? Which I think is probably more what draw the attention uh, of one of the comments on YouTube. So this is uh, some material that my wife had found. I think it was just from an Etsy shop, Etsy.com. Again, I'll put a link into the description. There's a bunch of different sellers that, that have this when I've actually looked, but um, I'll at least give a link to the one that we got it from in case you want to go and get it from the same place. But there's a few different types uh, of material that are very very similar and it's basically just cloth usually it comes by half a yard or by a yard and I can't remember exactly how much we had but she had also made some other things with this I think it was back in COVID times and she made a couple of face masks where you know well, if we have to wear a mask at least at least let's wear one that has trends on or something like that so I then had a bunch of this left over which again I acquired but she knows I acquired it. And the same thing, if you glue this down, just make sure that you don't put on too thick of a coat of glue, because then again, it kind of becomes hard and, and, it, and it negates the purpose of kind of putting it in. And really all you're wanting to do, both with the felt and then, and then with this kind of cloth, is just to give it a, a smoother finish so that the coaches aren't going to be sitting uh, on wood or locomotives or whatever it is that you put in here. These little divider pieces then, uh, are just again strips of craft wood. Uh, these ones I think are three millimeters by three millimeters. 
So again, convert that at one eighth by one eighth inch, something like that. Um, just in bits of craft wood, and again, you can get these from most craft supply stores, modeling supply stores. Um, they're basically just strips of balsa wood. Now again, kind of cut these to length for what I wanted to do, um, glued these in place, and all it's there for is then to give a little bit of a divider. Let's kind of roll the chair over. Just to give a little bit of a divider here so that as they're moving around, there's only stuff uh, that the cars can roll up and down. I haven't really felt the need to kind of put them in between here, but you certainly could do. Uh, and you know that would then obviously stop the cars from going side to side but again these aren't necessarily designed as something that you'll be carrying in and out of a car or a truck if you're going in and out of french shells where they're going to bounce around a bunch these were mostly designed and i mostly use them just for storage at home right this is a bit of an aside this would obviously be an optional thing um i had some of the little strips of wood left over and so what I did was threw this onto a little laser cutter that I have at home just to engrave in what I have in these boxes. So again, as they will be stacked on top of each other, I want to be able to quickly figure out what's in the box. So Great Northern Empire Builder from 1957. We've then got the, North Co the Northern Pacific North Coast Limited circa 1965. And then that one on the end is the Great Northern Empire Builder about 1968. That's why it's in big sky blue. So these will be totally optional. You could just put some kind of label on. You could figure out some other way of doing this if you wanted to, but it's a neat little touch. All right, cost of materials then. So the uh, birch ply sheets, the 12 by 24 inch sheets that you either use as the base or you use as a lid. Um, we're gonna go with US prices here just cause it's easy for me and I'm not gonna try and convert them. Those sheets are about five or $6 at a craft store. The sides, again, it was one eighth inch, 24 inches long, and then you cut them. So you get all four sides out of one piece and you'll actually end up with enough probably that you could do the size of another box. So if we go for one box, um, those were those boards were probably $3, maybe it's $4, something like that. So now you're at maybe $10. And then the little uh, strips of three by three inch uh, balsa, they were, I don't know, 60, 70 cents a piece. And so I at least use what, one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's say that's $4 uh, or at $14 in total. And then these little clips, uh, I think they were maybe as a dollar. So we're at about $15 in total for doing these boxes. Now, yes, you can get cardboard boxes you can purchase cardboard based boxes There's a couple of different manufacturers that i know of that make these i had looked at them they got pricey they, they were at least in the 15 to 20 dollar range just for card so we do then have the felt inside we do then have uh, this cloth material inside that probably adds um, another couple of dollars, three dollars to them. But in total, we're under twenty dollars, so we're under the cost of what the cardboard boxes are that I've typically seen in the U.S. But we've got something that's made of wood. It's not going to get crushed. It's not going to compress. It's not going to get as damaged by wood. And yes, I know that the cardboard boxes uh, are designed and engineered so that they've got very good um, crush writings and, and things like that. If you use them, then, then more power to you. They're great. Uh, I, I probably would invest in some if I was moving in and out between shells a lot. These trends, though, are unlikely to get taken to shells, even when I do that. When I used to go to shells in Seattle, these were not the trends that I would be taking to shells. Uh, in my mind, it's just not worth it. These are ones that, that hang out at home. If you're wondering where the Empire Builder is, it's up here. Well, it's just kind of hanging out. All 17 cars of it, and then uh, Air BB Air F units. So, like I said, real quick and simple ways that I have used to be able to build storage boxes for trans. $20 at the most in terms of materials, and you could build, I think I built all three of these boxes 
probably is in an afternoon in total in terms of you know letting the glue dry and then coming and cutting the felt and letting the glue dry and then putting the cloth on it's really not a lot of work it's a fun little project it certainly looks pretty cool having all of this different railroad stuff hanging out inside and then it's a good way that you're able to store your locomotives so this is what i do please share it in the comments if you have other ways of storing locos and rolling stock um, a lot of the, the little cars that I have, um, like fret cars, box cars, uh, well cars, they're all just kind of hanging out inside their micro trans plastic boxes at the moment. So please do share what you have in terms of better ways to be able to store things or other ways to be able to store things. Um, it is one way when you spend all this money on the different rolling stock and locomotives, you want to look after them. But at least for me, I also don't want to then spend $300 on, on a way to be able to store them. So... Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll be back again soon.